Christ Jesus came to save sinners. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the command of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, he says, Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless uh, genealogies, uh, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience of faith and fame, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside into vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Then Paul goes on to say, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, uh -huh. but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, uh -huh. for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine or teaching. And then Paul says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And here is where I was to be. He says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, after he set the uh, foundation. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And Paul goes on to list, uh, to lay out uh, a partial uh, resume, amen, mm -hmm. of his life, of his past experience. Paul says, I'm not talking about what you may or may not be. I'm talking about what I used to be, and I'm not ashamed to say what I used to be because I am no longer that. Yeah, so Paul says in verse 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious he said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Paul said, that was my excuse. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and word of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom Paul says, I am chief. How being for this cause I obtained mercy, and that in me first Jesus, Jesus Christ may show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which shall hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Christ Jesus came to save sinners, regardless of what the perception you may have up until this time of what Jesus' purpose was in coming to this earth. He did not come to start a social club. He no. did not come to set up social programs. Christ Jesus came for the purpose of saving sinners. Yes. Amen. And I for one, yes. I'm so thankful. Amen. Because I can go and join pretty much any club that I choose to join, but it ain't just anything that can save me from my sins. So I'm thankful that Jesus Christ came for the specific purpose of saving us from our sins. And I believe that Paul lays out his case of why he is so thankful that Jesus Christ came to save him from his sin. It says uh, Paul uh, shares his story uh, with us with the intent of reassuring us that there is hope for us too. Paul says, I share my story with the intent, with the purpose of helping you to have hope, to reassure you that there is hope for you as well. Amen. Paul says, I choose to call myself the chief of sinners. That way I'm allowing you to know that there is hope for you because Paul's already got that title. Now, I know that some of us, in our past lives, yeah, yeah. some of us, Brother Lena, unfortunately, gave Paul a run for his money. Yeah. Now, I know we got our halos on now. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. But some of us, some of us. gave Paul a run for his money. 
And we probably can tell Paul now, some of us, unfortunately, Paul, you may be number two. <laughs> but Christ Jesus came to save sinners. So Paul lays out his story. He lays out his case. He gives his testimony here. And I ask the question, I ask the question, when you look at Paul's life, when you look at who Paul was, Paul said he was a blasphemer. A blasphemer is one who flat out rejects what God says. Mm -hmm. A persecutor. Paul persecuted the church. Paul says he was injurious. And we know that Paul, when he encountered Jesus, he was on the road to Damascus for the purpose of once again bringing in those who are Christians. He said, if they're man or woman, it doesn't matter, you bring them in bound. So we know Paul's situation, the way it came from. Paul was a, what we would call a bad dude, amen. Paul was a, uh, a gangster, amen. Paul was a thug when you look at the life that he led, but the whole time he thought he was doing God's will, but he was not doing God's will. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. But Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. And looking at Paul's background, I asked the question this morning, who but God? Who but God? Who but God would send someone of Paul's background out to tell man what they need to be saved? Mm -hmm. To talk about the long suffering of God. Who but God would use someone of the reputation of Paul to carry his message. I want you to understand this morning. It is, to me, it is simply amazing what God can do with us. I know what he has done with me. I look at what he's done with Paul in this life as we can read the story of Paul, but I cannot read your story, and you cannot read all of my story, but I know what he did with Paul, and I know what he did with me. Amen. And you know what he has done with you in your life as well. Yes. Amen. So it simply amazes me of what God can do with us. Mm -hmm. It says in Acts chapter 9, verse 17, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto do with you in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, with, and he got up and was baptized. Yes. See, Paul heard that old, old story. Yes. Uh -huh. Our Savior came from glory. He heard how the Jesus Christ, how he died on the cross of Calvary, how he was buried, and how he rose again the third day. Paul heard that story, and he got up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we know Acts 22, 16 says, it's about Paul, and now says, now Paul, why tell you that? What you waiting on? Get up right. and be baptized. What you waiting on, Paul? And that's what Paul said this morning. And I'm saying to you this morning, what you waiting on? Yeah. What are you waiting on this morning? But he rose up and he was baptized. And when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And Acts, uh, Acts uh, 9 verse 20 says, And straightway he preached Christ. And look, this is the man who just a few days earlier, a short time earlier, this is the same man who had been on the road to Damascus to go and bring Christians, men and women, found to answer but call on the name of the Lord. Yeah, well. But now it says, he straightway preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And it says in verse 21, but all that heard him were amazed. And that's why I say, I'm amazed at what God can do. Mm -hmm. And said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the... He says, is this the same man? It's amen. amazing yes. what God can do with us. Mm -hmm. And he does not force anything upon us, but he puts his hand before us and says, this is what I have to offer. Amen. And I'm so thankful that he doesn't force it on us. But he lays it out and says, this is what I have to offer. This is what my son has done for you. And like Paul, we too can make that change. Amen. Let me close here. 
And I talk about this story about Paul because I want you to understand just three simple things this morning. Three simple things this morning. First of all, just like Paul, you are not beyond redemption. Amen. All right. All right. You're not beyond redemption. Amen. Some people say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what. You might not know what you've done. But this one thing I do know. You are not beyond redemption. God has put everything in place. You are not beyond redemption. You cannot convince me that Jesus died in vain. You may choose not to obey what God has put before us. Amen. But like Paul, you are not beyond redemption. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Peter says this way, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ mm -hmm. uh -huh. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Listen, we were brought. We have been redeemed. God has paid the price. The son has laid out his blood. Amen. The price has been paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I asked the question that Ananias asked of Paul, why tarry us thou? What are you waiting for? What else do we expect for God to do for us? Hmm. He says, I sent my son, uh -huh. Come on. my only begotten son. Oh, yeah. He came and died for you. He came for the express purpose of saving you from your sins. What else do we want? What else would we expect from God to save us? If the blood of the Son is not good enough, what else do we expect for God to lay out before us? Christ Jesus came to save sinners. And you have to understand this morning that you are not beyond redemption. And I know, and, 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 I, and I, I talk about bad kids sometimes too, down there present. Amen. But, 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 but parents, let's not tell those children, amen. Let's not put it in their mind at a young age that they are beyond, that they just ain't no good and they just ain't going to be no good because their daddy was no good and his daddy was no good. And, and let's, let's not do that. Amen. Amen. Because there will come a point in that child's life when they will stand up and say, I'm just no good anyway. Well, uh -huh. well. They got enough to deal with. Right. You are not beyond redemption. And if you think they're beyond redemption, give me two weeks with them. Amen. Amen. I live kind of outside the city so nobody can hear the scream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you take them home. That's right. I'll scream all you want. Ain't nobody can hear you. Mm -hmm. You may get the coyote drive. Ain't nobody can hear scream. Give me a couple weeks with them. But they are not beyond redemption. And we need to stop putting that in their minds. And we need to tell the world that you are not beyond redemption because God is already mm. He sent a son. Oh, did I mention that he died on the cross? Uh -huh. Did I mention that he was buried? Mm. I did, I did say that. Did I mention that he got up well, on the third day? He shed his blood, y'all. Yes, he did. We are not beyond redemption. Don't ever think that you are beyond redemption. The second thing is, Jesus did not die because of our righteousness. Uh -uh. Let me say that again. Jesus did not die because of our righteousness. Romans chapter uh, 5, real quick. Romans chapter 5. Jesus did not die because we are so good. How do you know that preacher? <laughs> well, Paul shares it with us. Yes. Paul says it this way in Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 6. Paul says about mankind. He says it to the church that was located at Rome. He says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die because we were so righteous. Amen. He died when we were without strength. It says, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. 
then he goes on to say in verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. How many of y'all die for a righteous man? Don't raise your hand. Mm. Then peradventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God, watch this, commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You are not beyond redemption. And anyway, Jesus did not die because we are so righteous. The very people who stood at the face of that cross yes. were righteous. and riled against him and reviled him and mocked him. He died for those very people. And though we were not physically standing there, the Bible says, for all have sinned. Yes. So though we were not there physically, we all were standing there. The song says, where you there? Yes. When they crucified my Lord. We all were there at the base of that cross as if we were standing there as witnesses because Christ died for sinners. It says, but God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But much more than being not justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, how by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. If his death brought us to God or paved the way for us to come back to God, what do you think his life is going to do for us? Amen. 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 If he did that for us in death, Amen. what do you think he's going to do for us in life? Amen. This is the Christ we're talking about. This is the Christ who came to die for sinners. He came to save sinners. This is who we're talking about. And Paul lays it out here. And he says in verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The price has been paid. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Sweet is the song we sing today. I am redeemed. We have been redeemed, but not just by anything, but by the blood of the Lamb. So it says, what was by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. He didn't die because we were so righteous. <laughs> While we were yet sinners, Paul says, Christ died for us. So not only do you need to understand that you are not beyond redemption, Jesus did not die because of your righteousness, but he died because of sin. And I ask this as I close here. Knowing what Jesus did for Paul, this same Paul who said, I am chief of sinners, of sinners of whom I am chief. How do you want to say it? This is what Paul said of himself. Knowing what you know about what he did for Paul, knowing what you know about what he did for all of us, let me ask this question. Do you not have any sense of gratitude hmm. for what he has done for you and how do you show it? Amen. Are we Amen. thankful? Amen. Are we grateful? And how do we show it? Amen. Are we thankful for what Jesus did for us? Amen. Are we truly thankful for what Jesus has done for us? And if we are, how do we Show it. Gratitude. Are we grateful for what he has done for us? And how do we show it? Y'all not realize that there are preachers who go and follow people around? I see what they're doing. To me, that's so foolish. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's such a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Because the eyes of the Lord yeah. are in every place. Mm -hmm. So why would I waste my time? I'm trying to get you to see my life. 
I'm trying to live life before you, not try to find out what you're doing. And I'm trying to come to you from God's word to help you to be grateful. I want us to be grateful for what God has done for us, and I want us to show it. Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to close it here. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Remember this. We are not beyond redemption. Jesus did not die because of our righteousness. And we have to have a sense of gratitude for what he has done for us. And we have to be willing to show it. And I'm not saying being overpowering, overburned, and just getting on people's nerves. But I'm talking about living our life in such a way, the Bible says, with as much as in you, live peacefully with all men. I'm talking about living a peaceful life. I'm talking about living a life of joy. I'm talking about even being happy. Yeah. It's okay for us to be happy as children of God. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be walking around like we've been you know, sucking on lemons and drinking vinegar all the time. Amen. Yeah. And then telling people you ought to become a Christian because look how miserable I am. <coughs> people should see our lives and say, truly they have been with Christ. Because we should be the happiest people as children of God. We can call on God. He's our Father. He's our protector. He's our Redeemer. We have prayer power. We have a direct line to Him. But I know that some of us like Used to be a song they used to sing, Jesus on the main line. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you want. That song came out way before they had call waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know some of us be on there. Girl, yeah, hold on. Oh, I said Jesus. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we would do it. We would leave our whole one. But listen, Jesus on the main line, you better ask him. No matter what you're doing in your life, Jesus going to call you one day, and you better answer. And I say you better answer now. Those are strong words, preacher. I'm pretty strong. You better answer now. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says every knee shall bow. Amen. Every tongue will confess. So guess what? You're going to answer. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather answer under my own free will. Amen. And not because I'm standing before God. And I'm trying to figure out how to ask for all the things that I've done and how I have just turned a rebellious face against him, just turned away from him. Jesus is calling this morning. Are you ready to answer? Let me, let me close out. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. We have to have a sense of gratitude for what he's done for us, and we have to be willing to show it. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If you did be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. A lot of us are going to miss heaven because we're too busy looking at what's going on around us, and we are not paying attention to God. Jesus is on the main line. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you want. Too many times we don't have our Focus where it needs to be. He says in verse 3, For you are dead and your life is here with Christ and God. When Christ, who is, watch this, our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And then it talks about mortifying your members which are upon the earth. And it talks about these things. you got to get rid of these things. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And then Paul says, you know what? In which also you walk sometimes. See, Paul wasn't the only one that was a bad dude. It was other people who were bad dudes. And a lot of us were bad dudes, amen, and do this. Mm -hmm. Since when you lived in them, but now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. We got to be careful about what we say. We got to watch our temper. We have to exercise self control. Amen. Amen. We have to exercise self control, brothers and sisters. We have to. We can't just go with that eye for an eye mentality. That don't fly anymore. Amen. Now, back during the times of the Old Testament, Joker hit you in your eye, you hit him back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not your two flat, you're not there now. But we don't live under that anymore. We are New Testament Christians. You can't even think.
Carl back maybe say stomp a mud hole in somebody? You can't think about stomping a mud hole in somebody these days, Carl. That's an affront to God. God knows our thoughts. He is looking at our hearts. We don't have to go out and commit to act if we just think it now. That's why we have to work on our minds. Amen. Amen. But he says here, Lie not one to another, seeing you have put off what? The old man with his deed, and put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. He says, For there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, uh, uncircumcision, but very skinny and bond nor free, but Christ is in all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness. This is the kind of person he wants. He's talking about humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, but bearing one another. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you do the same thing. Amen. He says, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule world in your heart, to the which you also you're called in one body, and be grateful. Oh. Be thankful. We need to be thankful for what God has done for us. And how do we show it? Let me close with this. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord, and whatsoever, mm. uh-huh. whatever, right. how do I show it? <laughs> you see, first of all, you're not beyond redemption. You have to understand that you are not beyond redemption. Jesus did not die because we are so righteous. And the third thing is, we have to learn to be grateful for what God has done for us, and then we need to show it. We need to be, Paul says, and be you thankful. And then verse 17, as I close, he says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it how? In the name of All the Lord. in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving what? Thanks. We don't give thanks enough. Mm-hmm. We don't thank God for what he's done for us enough. Yeah. And then too many times we don't show it that we are thankful. But to go back to my title, Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Wow. He came to save people like me. He came to save people like you. The Bible says, for all have sinned, and falling short of the glory of God. If you are here this morning, do not think of yourself as beyond redemption. Let me tell you when you are beyond redemption. When you blaspheme, you simply reject God's word outright, there's nothing God's going to do for you. Amen? Amen. You have limited God's power to do anything for you according to his word. But as long as you can recognize that you have done wrong, where you are is wrong, what you are part of is wrong, what you, where you've been living is wrong, and you're ready to come out of that. You're tired of sin, you're tired of being overtaken by sin and false and trials, and you're tired of all that, and you're ready to change. If you are ready this morning, if you recognize that Paul was chief of sinners, so look at what he became. And what he has done for Paul, he can do that for you and more. Amen. If you're here this morning, and you're not a child of God, you ought to become one. How do you become a child of God? We say it at the beginning, and we're going to say it at the end, by being obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried, and he rose again the third day. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the facts of the gospel. He died according to the scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, all according to the scriptures. And he told his disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in his baptized shall be saved. What do they preach? They preach the story of his death, his burial, and the resurrection. How does one end up being saved by that process? You have to obey that story. You heard that story this morning. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question. Are you willing to believe it? Because without faith, you cannot please God. Are you willing to believe it? Are you willing to have a change of mind? That's called repentance. You turn away from and turn towards God. It's a change in direction. It's a stopping and a turning away from. Are you willing to repent this morning? Whatever you may have been a part of to this point, the way you've been living your life, the way you even looked at sin, are you willing to have a change of mind this morning about that? Repent, turn away from it, and start turning towards God. Mm-hmm. And then you must be willing to confess the greatest tongue, the mortal tongue, the greatest name, the mortal tongue, and confess. 
And that is your belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. You simply make this statement and ask, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Like the eunuch in Acts chapter 8, you acknowledge, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And upon making that confession, you can go down to the water grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away. The water is ready, the clothes are ready, the angels 